In order to definitively prove that Rockstar's game engine has serious problems, as if it needed the help, we got liquid nitrogen involved to illustrate a point. Back when GTA 5 was new, we discovered an issue in the Rockstar engine, or Rage, where a faster, better CPU would actually get worse performance in some instances. Artificially capping the frame rate would solve this, sort of, but it's counterintuitive. In our CPU benchmark for Red Dead Redemption 2, we found this issue again. This is an odd issue because it requires a CPU that's both fast and a low thread count by modern standards. There's only one CPU that fits this specific requirement right now, and that's the 9700K. What a lot of people didn't understand was that it's a two-part issue. So we got a lot of comments saying that it's a lack of hyperthreading causing the issue. This is wrong, and we put in some extra time to prove what Rockstar's issue is once and for all. Another topic we're visiting is that of asynchronous compute enablement, where we'll test enabling it via XML in a settings file. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Corsair Virtuoso RGB wireless gaming headset. The Corsair Virtuoso headset is comfort focused with a set of memory foam ear pads, headband, and lightweight construction. The Virtuoso wireless headphones use 50 millimeter drivers that range from 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz with a wireless connection that ranges up to 60 feet. Corsair also includes a detachable, high-quality microphone for voice comms. Learn more at the link in the description below. So as stated, this video will be broken into two separate items to research. The first one, the most interesting, is the mystery CPU performance problem. This is a little bit different from GTA 5 this time. The, the threshold for threads is now different. It's a newer game. The frame rate threshold is also different. And it seems to manifest in slightly different ways than in GTA 5, but ultimately the heart of the issue is the same. If you saw our original two-part series on investigating the mystery FPS results for GTA 5, this is a continuation of that, but with the updated uh, Rage engine. It's redundant, but updated Rage. So first CPU, and then second, we're going to async compute. There's a setting in the XML file people have found. Asynchronous compute support was disabled. It's set to false by default. You can set it to true. Some people claim that this increases the low end performance, the frame time consistency. We're going to be looking at that with a couple of different video cards today. Let's start with the CPU issue first. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a few different cases of serious stuttering, but we're focusing on the one that's in the rarest of conditions. There is an engine FPS threshold where after crossed, performance will tank and the game will begin stuttering hard. If the threshold is not crossed, so if you have a lower frame rate, like on a less capable CPU, the stuttering will not happen provided sufficient thread count is present. Stuttering manifests in long frame-to-frame -frame intervals intermittently, which we showed in our CPU benchmark and can show on screen again just as an example. We're looking at a frame time plot here, and you'll see occasional spikes upward. It's ultimately a game-ruining experience. In order to cross the FPS threshold, performance must be high but threads must also be at a deficit to get the stuttering. So both a thread deficit and a high frame rate are needed to encounter this issue, hence why it's difficult to explain and uncommon, but significant when found. Because high performance and medium or low thread count is an uncommon pairing, it's difficult to illustrate on older four core eight thread CPUs since they're also too slow. The frequency is lower. They can't hit the FPS threshold. This is why everyone was sort of wrongly thinking that it's a hyper-threading issue because they saw the 7700K and 2600K doing fine in testing, but the 7600K, which doesn't have hyper-threading, but also just doesn't have enough threads, period, and the 9700K doing poorly. We illustrated that at higher settings, like at 1440p, and we'll put that chart on the screen again, where GPU bottlenecks are introduced, the issue vanishes entirely. The likelihood of these issues being encountered in the wild is low because most users would run higher settings in this game and become GPU bound. I'm going to break this down one more time on camera just to be extremely clear here because this has been an issue that's been difficult to communicate because of the unique mixture of elements you need. So to be absolutely clear, Severe stuttering happens in Red Dead 2 when a CPU hits or exceeds a frame rate threshold, which appears to be approximately 140 FPS. We found this by working with the 9700K, which encountered the severe stuttering issues at 1080p, so the GPU was less of a bind. We were able to hit about 150 FPS cap for that with the 2080 Ti with our settings, and so that was our maximum frame rate potential on average in the CPU benchmarks. So what we did was we brought down the frame rate in locked steps. So we went down to 144, 120, and so forth. And you can see that as you introduce those caps, the issue begins to vanish. So at 120 FPS frame rate cap, limiting the 
ability of the engine and the GPU and the CPU to do more than 120 frames, obviously, the issue vanishes entirely, which is why at a higher graphics setting where you're GPU bound and you drag down the frame rate, the issue disappears. So it seems to be about 140 for the threshold for this issue. GTA 5 is 187.5, which was the engine FPS limit. This one's a little different. That's not an engine FPS limit anymore because you can go higher. But now it's, it's some weird marker where with sufficiently low thread count, you encounter the stuttering. So to reiterate, once you hit or exceed 140 FPS approximately, stuttering will occur, but only in processors from what we've seen so far that have eight threads or fewer, regardless of how those threads are created, SMT or not. In order to first hit the FPS threshold, the CPU has to be fast. Then in order to suffer from the bug, it has to have eight threads or fewer because older eight thread CPUs are not fast enough to hit the 140-ish FPS threshold. They do not stutter while newer, faster CPUs will. So four core eight thread options don't really exist anymore, which has been why it's been hard to illustrate this, but we created one ourselves. So the only reason AMD wasn't affected by this is because it's too slow. And we're not saying that in a derogatory way, we're saying it in a factual way. We've obviously recommended quite a few AMD processors this year, like the 3600 over the i5s, and have to put that, quali that qualifier out there, otherwise people freak out, sadly. So we overclocked the 3700X with liquid nitrogen to prove the point, we'll get to that data later. And then next, uh, AMD's speeds are simply not fast enough to hit the FPS threshold in our test environment, just like the 2600K was not. Let's go through a couple more numbers. What we did here was we did a few different things. So we took a 9900K and we tested it in eight core, eight thread configuration, disabling some of the cores and obviously threads in that test. We also tested it in a four core, eight thread configuration. So effectively, we tested it with not even effectively, just period. We tested it without hyper threading and we tested it with hyper threading, but both of those configurations were at eight total threads, one of which was eight cores and eight threads, the other was four cores and eight threads. So now we can address everybody's different theories about this and put it to rest. Let's get those charts on the screen now. This chart is sorted by 0.1% lows, highest to lowest, and asterisk, we'll highlight some of those, indicates that stuttering did occur in the testing intermittently, but was not reproducible regularly or during our test pass recording period. In order to get the four core, eight thread, 9900K configuration to consistently stutter, we had to make up for the loss of computing power and threads by overclocking the CPU. Remember that eight core, eight thread will perform better than four core, eight thread, even at the same frequency. So there's a loss there too. We also brought four core, eight thread up to 5.9 gigahertz and 1.535 volts on liquid nitrogen, which allowed us to make up for the loss of threads. The end result was 137 to 140 FPS average, which is great, but 0.1% lows were down to six to seven FPS. That's because we hit the 140-ish threshold in terms of frame times. That means we were hitting spikes upwards of 170 milliseconds long, which is very noticeable, and also doing so intermittently, which makes it worse. This matches the original 9700K result almost exactly. We've now replicated the issue on a four core, eight thread, hyper-threaded part. So even though we've turned off half of the cores, hyper-threading is still on. So hyper-threading was clearly not the problem. It just required enough speed to make up for the trade-offs. So the reality of ever encountering this is effectively zero unless on a 9700K and also pushing for over 140 FPS. The eight core, eight thread 9900K variant did worse as its physical core configuration pushed performance higher. So a better CPU gets a worse result as long as it's limited to eight threads. The 9700K with 144 Hertz and V-Sync applied still encountered the issue showing that the threshold for stuttering is 144 and below. The 120 Hertz V-Sync 9700K did excellently with 120 FPS average, expectedly, and an 80 FPS 0.1% low. The 60 Hertz config with V-Sync was the same as it's below the cap, but it is unnecessarily restricted in the face of 120 Hertz working fine. We didn't encounter a single errant frame time spike for these two configurations. And at five gigahertz and 720p, the 9900K at four core eight threads began to show issues, but it was hard to push the performance high enough to really stutter without that liquid nitrogen change we did. 
We were at 22 FPS, 0.1% lows, which means the stutters weren't as bad or as frequent, but still present and beginning to average out the data in a negative fashion. So far, these results illustrate that it has nothing to do with hyperthreading as a direct reason for the performance, but rather entirely to do with straight frame throughput, just like we said the first time. That said, this better demonstrates what we were originally showing. As stated in our initial benchmark, this becomes something of a non-issue if you just limit the frame rate below 140 or increase the graphic settings to a point where the GPU is the bind, like high settings on a 2080 Ti, that's more realistic anyway. And if you set the frame rate limit to 120, you'll definitely be fine, even on an i700K. As for AMD, we had to invest a lot more effort into getting this to bug out because AMD isn't natively fast enough to trigger the issue. Here's a chart with the 3700X. Stock, the 3700X was doing 131 FPS average and 78 FPS 0.1% lows, which are both fine numbers. In order to push closer to the stutter threshold, we tried higher frequency memory, we tried tuning Infinity Fabric in memory to 111, and we tried running at 4.3 gigahertz all core. But we had issues where the CPU would not always reproduce the original performance. This might be related to patches in between, so we'll ignore the original number and work with the new data instead. The only times we were able to trigger hard stuttering on the 3700X were when we had it clocked to 4.85 gigahertz or 4.80 gigahertz with 3800 megahertz RAM and one to one to one clocks. Also overclocking the GPU, which finally caused it to stutter down to 21 FPS, 0.1% lows. As a quick aside, we couldn't go higher than five gigahertz uh, or even 4.9 with the 3700X because in order to do that, we need more cold and to bring the temperature down below 100 degrees, we have to drop Infinity Fabric to 1467 megahertz, which makes performance worse. So we stayed below five gigahertz, that way we could keep the Infinity Fabric set to a higher value. Anyway, the 21 FPS 0.1% low number we have here was enough for accomplishing our goal, which was to investigate whether this issue can occur on both AMD and Intel and whether it's vendor agnostic. And it is vendor agnostic, but it's extremely difficult to reproduce on AMD. AMD is not immune, it's just that AMD has a raw speed deficit and so is able to skirt by, skate by the issue. Some of this may be GPU driver overhead related as well, which is why overclocking the GPU would have helped with the AMD CPU. We also saw stutters at 4.8 gigahertz though, where 0.1% lows were 30 FPS. Note that all of these for the 3700X were eight core eight thread, doing four core eight thread would not provide sufficient performance to even begin to reach the uh, FPS threshold. And then also remember that average isn't a maximum. So a lower 0.1% low value with frame time spikes north of 100 milliseconds, for example, will also drag down the average number below where the threshold is. So it doesn't look like it's hitting, even though it might be. So then closing out this part of the video, this confirms that no, hyperthreading is not the reason for the performance here and the lack thereof is not. The game doesn't know the difference. All it knows is that it wants in this instance, it appears to be at least eight thread, well, more than eight threads to work optimally with a high frame rate, as illustrated by the 9700 and 9900K. So there is an optimization here. Rockstar does have a problem that we'd like to see them solve in the future. That said, it's also a problem that is sort of resolvable, in air quotes there, because you can work around it by bringing down your top end performance to, say, 120 FPS max. And realistically, most people who are running something like a 9700K and a GPU sufficiently fast to even allow triggering of this issue will probably be running at least high settings anyway, which would bring you down below that FPS threshold so you would be fine. It's a very specific user who will encounter this, one who has maybe a 9700K and also wants 140 FPS, in which case you're out of luck. It's an optimization issue then. People like to say that games are poorly optimized all the time you see it. It's always one of the top comments on a new benchmark. This game is poorly optimized for PC. No one knows what they're talking about when they say that. If you ask most of those commenters, what is unoptimized about it? Can you point to what can improve? They wouldn't know. Not at a code level, not even at an abstract level. Most of the time, people just have no idea. Now, sometimes you can point to something like textures and have a good idea there. But for the most part, it's hard to identify. This is something that's pretty easily identifiable as a specific issue that Rockstar should fix at some point, because it's existed for four or five years now. So Rockstar, you have absolutely no excuse for continuing to let this issue uh, exist in the rage in the engine, the Rockstar Games engine. The threads in a game engine are typically assigned to things like you might have one thread for rendering. That's pretty common for all the draw calls, things like that. That's typically your most heavily loaded thread. You'll probably have another one for physics. You might have another one for AI. You'll probably have one for audio processing. 
game logic might be in there with AI, stuff like that. And however Rage is set up, it's set up in a way that at, for, again, it has to be a sufficiently high frequency, high FPS, which is what makes it so weird. At a sufficiently high FPS, something catches. Maybe it's tripping over the render thread, where now stutters are introduced and there's not enough load sharing between the threads, so the slowest one is going to start choking performance. That's our theory for it anyway, but this should be resolved. Probably talked about this one enough for now. Uh, I'll note that we did try enabling triple buffering and it didn't, didn't work here, and we tried lowering the in-game refresh rate without setting vsync and that didn't work, but you saw our earlier results for that stuff if you want to set it up. Let's get into the asynchronous compute topic. The next theory has been largely a community propagated one that async compute in the XML file helps improve frame time stability. We've had a lot of trouble validating this claim, but it did lead us to discover some general consistency issues with the game. Asynchronous compute must be leveraged both at a code level and a hardware level, and the XML settings file located in documents, Rockstar Games, and Red Dead 2's settings folder contains a flag for async compute that's set to false by default. Now, there's probably a reason it's set to false by default, like maybe not working or not working properly. We're not quite sure what it is, but our first set of tests was on Turing with the 2080 Ti, tested at 4K. Our results were almost perfectly accurate between both async on and async off configurations. And by perfectly accurate, what we really mean is they were basically identical and each run was more or less identical to the previous run, which is great. Consistency is good in benchmarking. We ran 64 FPS average, 39 to 40 FPS average for the 1% lows, and 38 FPS for the 0.1% lows on average between the results. The original bench from launch day was a little higher across the board on average, but also tested before numerous patches. These three data points are averaged of about 15 total runs and therefore tens of thousands of frame time data points. So we're confident in the repetition and the consistency of the results. The standard deviation for the async on and async off tests with this particular configuration both run on the same day, 0.3 FPS standard deviation for 1% lows and 0.7 FPS standard deviation for 0.1% lows. We were unable to validate user remarks that the async flag did anything on the 2080 Ti, at least at this resolution. We next tested with a 2070 Super at 1440p. For this one, we were again happy to see the consistency of our test passes thus far. For these two, our standard deviation is roughly the same as the 2080 Ti, and our data lines up almost precisely between async on and async off. There was no difference for a 2070 Super at 1440p with high settings and some custom settings mixed in. Just to be sure that we weren't hitting some resolution constraint before anything else became relevant, we also dropped down to 1080p medium with the 2070 Super. For this set of tests, we again saw the same results between each benchmark. We have thus far been unable to produce differences on these two RTX cards. On to the more difficult one now. The RX 5700 XT was a very mixed bag. We spent an entire day and a bit more running and rerunning tests on two different 5700 XTs just in case. However, we also learned that the benchmark results are less consistent. There doesn't seem to be a pattern to it. Some games, the first pass will score notably lower or higher than others. So we do add passes to account for that when it happens. But in this game, it'll seemingly randomly <laughs> score higher or lower for frame time pacing doesn't matter what order it's in, or how many passes you run, or how many times you restart. This indicates mixed overall frame time consistency. It did not service in our initial benchmarks because we had higher scoring on average, as you saw in that initial benchmark video. But after dozens of additional tests, we've now narrowed it down so that you can see frame time pacing can be more variable than ori originally uh, seen. So here's a sample list of a few of the tests that we ran most recently without charting. This should help show some of the raw data for what we're dealing with. This isn't all the data, but it's enough to show you what's going on. For asynchronous compute support disabled, we measured 0.1% low values between a completely acceptable 68 FPS average and a uh, for the for 0.1% lows and a poorly paced 35 to 36 FPS. This was one set of passes, but we ran another after this and saw much the same placement. We can't definitively draw any conclusions from this, aside from the fact that the averages are largely unaffected by occasional one-off frame time hitches in the middle of testing that can last for anywhere from 5 to 15 frames. The Tai Chi had the same inconsistent performance, albeit different absolute values. We didn't run the Tai Chi as much. It was really just there to make sure there weren't any 
crazy issues with the other card that we didn't know about, and there were not. This is presumably what async enablement is supposed to fix, but it doesn't. We had identical results with asynchronous compute support enabled in the XML file. When things went without a literal hitch, we measured 64 FPS, 0.1% lows, and it hit 36 to 38 when the one-off spikes dragged down the averaging across anywhere from, again, maybe 5, 7 to 15 frames. Asynchronous compute enabled and disabled changed nothing here. We don't have any conclusion we can draw from this other than to say the XT seems to be scoring less consistently in our test platform. We validated this on two separate identical GPU test benches and so we'll have to revisit this after some additional testing, maybe after more patches to figure out what to do next. To better illustrate this variability, we can rely on some frame time plots. This first plot shows the Gigabyte 5700 XT at 1080p and with one of the higher results and one of the lower results. No settings were changed between these. The game was fully restarted between each of these two tests. In this set of data, you can see that they're actually pretty close to identical all the way through the test with one exception around the 3000 frame mark. In this instance, we have sustained spikes up to just above 28 milliseconds or at 28 milliseconds, which drags down the average frame time significantly. The spike in this specific example sustains for approximately seven frames, meaning we've gone from about 11 millisecond frame times to nearly 30 for one fifth of a second. That's definitely noticeable. It's not the worst we've seen in this game, but it is a slight hitch and it does affect the averages in a big way. In a second plot with two separate sets of data, but also with asynchronous compute support disabled, we see the same behavior repeat. Things are mostly equivalent up until one hard spike, and it's around the same spot in the same test path where we hit approximately 28 milliseconds for several consecutive frames. Now, if we do a frame time plot for asynchronous compute support enabled, you'll see basically the same thing. It seemed to be agnostic toward the setting, so enabling or disabling it in the XML file did not affect this performance. It was fully capable of performing well or uh, not great in either instance. Finally, we have one set of data where we were able to produce a replicable repeated result that seems to have verified some of the claims online. Specifically at 1440p high on the 5700 XT, we were able to repeatedly demonstrate that the average 0.1% low figure dropped with the default async compute option of off. We retested this multiple times, like all the others, and also added a second GPU to the rotation. The end result was about eight sets of data for off and for on uh, across the two cards, so roughly in the range of 60 to 80,000 individual frame time data points, where we found that 0.1% lows did actually improve. We couldn't replicate this in any of the other tests, but it seems to replicate consistently here. This may have something to do with which parts of the pipeline are getting hit harder at the two resolutions, or maybe just the game. We validated this multiple times on both cards, so it appears to be a real result, at least in this test, and async compute enablement did help in this specific set of settings. Just for some visualization, here's one final frame time plot. You can see that it's roughly the same performance behavior as we saw in the previous 1080p results, except it was repeatable and predictable with these settings. It almost seems like the asynchronous compute option wasn't applying at 1080p. And we did some things like write protect the file and making the changes in different orders, uh, rebooting the system, things like that, making sure we applied all changes to the settings file without making any changes in game, all kinds of stuff to make sure that it wasn't overriding or overwriting the file when we launched the game to test. So we're not quite sure what to make of the difference between the 1080p and 1440p data with the 5700 XT, aside from pointing to a potential game bug. After all, there is a reason it's disabled by default, and it's probably because something was broken or not implemented. Otherwise, they would have just turned it on if it always makes things better. And just for clarity, all of, well, most of the data today was done in uh, Vulkan. There was a DX12 data point in here in the first half of the video for the CPU stuff, and we've done some Vulkan and DX12 comparisons in general. For our test bench, we didn't really see a difference in the lows that was meaningful between them. There's a bit of a difference, but it was outweighed on average by the higher average frame rate, more than you might typically see in games like Hitman 2, for example. And, and looking around and doing more testing on we've now, well, four different benches, which consists of probably maybe six motherboards of different types, because we did the CPU benchmarks as well, and each one of those is a potentially different board. Uh, we, we have a pretty good snapshot of performance, and this game does definitely have some weird quirks where it's,
you, you talk about people pointing at games and saying this is poorly optimized, but not quite knowing why. This is a fantastic example of a game that is genuinely poorly optimized, and we can point to reasons why. So those are pretty rare. But anyway, the, the end all for these two issues, for the 9700K, it's a specific issue. It was explained a few times in this video. not going to go through it again, but it's resolvable via workaround if you intentionally lower your frame rate either by cap or just by increasing the graphics quality to the extent that your GPU becomes a bottleneck and you reduce your frame rate at the same time below something like 140. And then for the asynchronous compute thing, up until the very end, the last set of tests we ran, we weren't able to validate the claims that turning it on or off even mattered at all for Vulkan, which was the primary claim, was that it helps with Vulkan and with AMD cards. But we couldn't validate it, period, with the two NVIDIA devices we tested and the two resolutions. And we couldn't validate it for the first half of our AMD tests. But in that final set of 1440 tests, it seemed to work. And for a lot of this stuff, there's not really a clear indication as to why there's this disparity of when it does versus doesn't work. And we have theories, as noted, one of them would be which part of the pipeline is being loaded, for example, and is something else becoming burdened before the asynchronous compute flag even matters. But at the same time, we don't really have a way to, to specifically confirm some of those hypotheses, I guess, at this point. And so the end result is that we can say sometimes it seems like it helps, and sometimes it seems like it doesn't help. And the best way for you to know if you actually care is to run multiple test passes and use external software. Don't use the built-in benchmarks frame time reporting. Use some external software, run it multiple times on and off, and then see if it helps. Doing one pass of each isn't enough to, to really determine it, because if you look at our set of example test data we put in this video, it's all over the place sometimes. So you might get a good run. If, if you only do one pass, you might get a great run the first time, and then you'll probably get a great run the second time if you switch settings. And now you don't know if it even does anything. But if you test it twice, you might have enough data, or ideally more than that, but twice might start giving you enough data to figure it out. Uh, ideally, you do something like four passes for each. So anyway, really strange. And we, we, can, we can definitively state that it seems to help sometimes. We can't definitively state when or why. So if it helps you, cool. It seems like that might not be placebo in some instances. And if it doesn't help you, well, you don't have the right mix of hardware or settings to make it work. And we're not going to really dig into it further because it's just it doesn't matter. I mean, you just do some quick tests yourself for each configuration and, and see if it helps. But, uh, and it doesn't seem like it hurts in the very least. Didn't seem like that. So, and then finally, it is off by default. So we would assume there's a reason for that. And it's probably related to what we saw where performance is all over the place and it doesn't seem to do anything with some settings. So if it's off, maybe it's just not implemented properly or maybe it's bugged or whatever, no idea. But anyway, uh, it, there is a reason it's off by default. We just don't know what that is. And Rockstar is very hard to get a hold of these days. So. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps you out. It's definitely an interesting mystery with the 9700K stuff. That was more interesting than the async stuff. But uh, check back for more. Subscribe, as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up some of the items from our store if you want to support us directly. Our large mod mats are in stock and shipping, and our toolkits are in stock and shipping. And for each item purchased on store.gamersnexus.net during the month of November, we are working with Eden Reforestation Projects and our distributor to plant a minimum of 10 trees per item ordered. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to support us. Thank you for watching. Uh, oh, and one more thing. Let us know if you have any specific sets of hardware and graphic settings where you have different experiences with this, uh, these options in the game. Let us know how it worked out for you, what hardware you're running, software settings you're running, so that we can kind of create a better picture of what's going on with Red Dead 2. But we should probably just wait for a batch, ultimately. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.